Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to provide this week's update on the COVID-19 pandemic for the week of November 12th, 2020. This week, I'm gonna divide my comments into four parts, the spread and growth of the pandemic globally, the change of patterns and death in Europe and what that means for us, cases, hospitalizations and deaths in the United States and the status of the pandemic in our region. Globally, obviously the numbers continue to go with um, grow with almost 1.3 million deaths worldwide and 54 million cases and a 3.5% increase in the past week. And several people have asked me, why do you follow the week to week increase? Because that tells me how fast the pandemic is growing and whether it's slowing down. So you can see at a 1% growth rate, there's not much going on. At a 5% growth rate, the number of whatever you're following will double in about 14 weeks. And at a 10% growth rate, it'll double in about eight weeks. So you look at the week to week growth rate. If it's going down, that's a good thing. If it's going up, that's a bad thing. If it's staying the same, that's actually not a good thing either. So in terms of the world, we saw a significant slowing in the early part because obviously there had been a huge explosion in deaths. And then the last week, 3.5%. But what worries me a little bit is if you look at the last couple of months, you see what the worldwide rate is about the same. That tells me that the pandemic is not slowing down and is continuing to grow. And at about a three and a half percent week to week growth rate, if that continues, we'd expect to get to two million deaths in about three months. In terms of where the deaths are occurring, again, we color code this yellow, uh, white is Europe, red is South America, blue is North America. And you can see now that South America is becoming one of the most impacted areas of the world, but the numbers in Europe are going up as well. This is a map from WHO, a chart from WHO. And what it shows is that early in the pandemic, the deaths were in Asia. Then in the early part of the summer, uh, spring and summer, it was in Europe. It moved to the Americas. But look at this. Now the number of deaths are increasing significantly in Europe again. And that brings us to our second topic, not just the number of deaths, but the pattern. You'll recall that we used Belgium as an example of a mature pandemic. It grew rapidly in the early part of the spring and then leveled off. But now in the last month or so, it has been going back up again. And you can see this in new cases in Belgium, but especially in new deaths. And what you can see, the second pattern looks very much like the first. Now, hopefully we're starting to see it come down, but we'll have to wait and see. But for after months and months of being at less than 1%, the last week, Belgium saw a 10% increase. And we're seeing the same kind of quick upturn in the four most impacted countries in Europe. Definitely something worth following. Now, we don't know exactly what it means. Is this simply because they were shut down so well that when they open up, it spreads, which is what I think is probably happening. But it could be due to a new mutation or a new wave of infections. We'll have to wait and see. In terms of the U.S., I want to look at this a little differently than I have before, because there's a logical sequence that we expect, right? First, you expect an increase in cases, then you expect an increase in hospitalizations, then you expect an increase in deaths, and each will follow the other by a few weeks, and each will go down in size because there'll be more cases and hospitalizations, more hospitalizations than deaths. In terms of cases, this is a map of the U.S. where all the cases had been as of the beginning of August, and you can see largely in the metro areas in the Northeast and in the Southeast. And then this is what it looks like in the last two weeks, just a solid mass of cases in the upper uh, Midwest and the Northwest, and almost 11 million cases in the US since the beginning. And what you can see is it sort of looks like a clearing along the East Coast, the South and the Southwest. This is an interesting transition. This is where all the cases in America were in July, in about July 24th, the two weeks prior to that. And you put it into motion, you don't see a lot going on. You see sporadic cases in the Southeast, a little bit of an explosion in Alabama there. And then you start to see this spread into the upper Midwest. And you can see Latin, last week, it just, it just, it just all hitting right in the middle of the country. And you can see in terms of total cases, the U.S. had sort of a blip in March, another blip in 
July, and then a blip in the last couple of weeks. As I've said before, I'm always hesitant to use cases because they are dependent in part on testing. So it's better to use something like hospitalizations or deaths. In terms of hospitalizations, this is the cumulative number from the CDC. You can see it continues to go up. But what's important here is the week to week growth rate again. If you look at the last couple of weeks, it looks like there's a slight increase in hospitalizations. This tells me that there really is a growth of the pandemic nationally. And of course, you'll see this in deaths as well. In terms of total deaths, the U.S. has now had almost 250,000 total deaths due to COVID-19. The week-to-week -week growth rate was 3.1%. Again, if you look at this over the last couple of weeks, you can see it's consistent. Uh, in fact, even a slight increase. And at 3.1%, the total number of deaths in the U.S. will hit 300,000 sometime between Christmas and New Year's. So this worries me. We see an increase in cases, increase in hospitalizations, increase in deaths. What we're not seeing yet is a resurgence of the infection in those areas that were initially hit the hardest, the Northeast. Now, there's a little bit of a hint, maybe of an increase there in Connecticut. We'll keep an eye on that. But really what we're seeing is a spread of this pandemic into new areas. The areas that were hit first, the Northeast and the West, seem to be relatively clear as this fire burns towards the middle and northern part of the country. And if you look at that, you can see our region as well. Uh, Tennessee's now had almost 4,000 deaths. We've actually passed Virginia in terms of total deaths. Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia has had almost 500 deaths. Virginia has been sort of slowing down. It, it's popped around a little bit, but if you look at this map, this is where all the cases had been as of August 13th, largely in the metro areas. In the past two weeks, you can see a complete movement into rural areas. Again, this is a, a transition. Uh, Tennessee, on the other hand, has been popping around at six to seven percent growth rate. That's really high. And what we had seen is August, most of the cases had been in the peri-urban areas, but in the last two weeks, now it's all over the state, but especially in our region. Um, and I'll come back to that in a moment. In terms of hospitalizations in Tennessee, um, again, this is we've been running at about five percent week-to-week increase. This is a significant issue. So we're, for whatever reason, Tennessee seems to be hit, being hit harder than Virginia, uh, which is being hit harder than the rest of the United States. Remember, at a 5% growth rate, we're going to double whatever number we're looking at in about 14 to 15 weeks. So in terms of hospitalizations, if that's what we're running at, we're looking at a very serious problem across the state. If you look at our region, you can see that in the last couple of weeks, we're being really heavily hit in this region. And in terms of week to week growth rate, the Appalachian Highlands, the whole entire east part of the US, uh, east part of Tennessee, uh, about an 8% week to week growth rate. And that means we'll expect to see a doubling in the number of deaths in our region by the middle of January. So the bottom line is COVID 19 is still spreading widely in the world. The growth rate may be increasing suggesting that it may double sooner than the projected 13 weeks. Eight of the top 20 most heavily impacted countries are in South America, but the European countries are definitely catching up again. The U.S. is now eighth in the world with 755 deaths per million, with most of our growth being in the rural northern states, and we account for about one-fifth of all the cases and deaths in the world. There appears to be a significant and growing resurgence of deaths in the most impacted European countries, but it's not precisely clear what the cause of that is or how persistent it'll be. And we are not yet seeing a comparable resurgence in those areas of the United States that were hit the earliest. The Appalachian Highlands appears to be at the heart of one of the most impacted areas of the United States, and we're predicting to double in about uh, mid-January. So the bottom line is we need to keep doing the things we know work. Avoid unnecessary crowds, wear masks, engage in social distance, which means shorten the amount of time you're near people and maximize the distance you are from people. Implement good hygiene, sneeze into your arm, wash your hands, stay home if you're sick. We need to conduct much more widespread testing and contact tracing, 
at pace, play, uh, pay more attention to quarantine and isolation, protect the elderly and those with chronic conditions. And with as with any scientific issue, we've got to be willing to follow the data and change our thoughts and actions as new information is available. And let's see if we can't rebuild trust in our regulatory and public health agencies by allowing science to dictate our perceptions and actions. There's been a lot of talk about vaccines. That'll be a great thing if we get them. But until then, we've got to keep doing these things that we know work. There's a lot more information about COVID-19 on the College of Public Health website. If you know anyone who'd like to be added to our mailing list to get these weekly updates, please let me know. I'd like to thank Melissa White, graduate assistant for updating many of these slides, and Dara Young for editing, producing, and posting these videos. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.